family. Family is a word that we all say the same thing, but we don't mean the same thing. Behind closed doors, there might be a lot of tension. Maybe some people aren't getting along with their family members. My name is Mohammed Maxwell Hassan. Really excited to have this conversation with you because it's such a delicate, sensitive topic. For many Muslim homes, it's hard to get along. On the outside, everything seems to be happy-go-lucky, but behind closed doors, maybe not so much. Now, allow me to preface this by saying that it's not just a Muslim problem. This issue of the family is universal. One famous example of this is the NBA legend Kobe Bryant. Now, if you're familiar with Kobe Bryant, there's a very famous photo of him where he was pictured with the championship trophy. But yet, even though he just won the championship, he looks sad. And the reason why he looks sad was because in spite of all the hard work, the energy, the effort that it took to get to that championship level, his own parents didn't attend the championship game. His own parents didn't support him. His own parents didn't value that at all. And why weren't his parents on the sidelines or why weren't they cheering him on? It's because they didn't approve of his marriage. They weren't happy with the type of person that he married. And so already at that high astronomical level, this you're talking a celebrity among celebrities, even they have family issues. And so the, depending on who you ask, you might wonder why on earth is all of this family tension bubbling up? Why is it that people can't seem to get along? And one way you can look at it, it's based on two things, arrogance and ignorance. Arrogance and ignorance. Arrogance meaning I'm right and you can't see things through the eyes of someone else. There's that constant push and, push and pull. Who's going to let up? And then for ignorance, oftentimes they're not on the same wavelength. Maybe on a particular topic, the son or the daughter may have more knowledge than the parents, but the parents, they just don't know about it or they don't want to accept, they don't have that same level of knowledge and vice versa. The parents may be the ones who have the life experience, but yet the youth don't see them in that way. A Quranic example of this, of how this family tension manifests itself through arrogance and ignorance, you can look at the story of Ibrahim a.s. Ibrahim a.s., what a noble prophet, one of the top figures in Islam. And even still with Ibrahim a.s., there is a mention of conversation between him and Azhar. Now, scholars differ between who Azar is. Is he his actual father or is it his uncle? And the confusion arises is based on how he refers to him, could be referring to him as his father, but maybe not actually his father. So just to keep it on the safe side, we're going to say Ibrahim a.s. with Azar, who is his, you could say, relative, like someone that he's with. And so Azar was making idols and at that time even still like way back then they used to he used to make idols so ibrahim salam, he's trying to understand what's going on and trying to convince him to say hey you know what is this idol going to do for you idols can't help you out they're not there they're not meant to be worshipped you're making your god essentially it doesn't add up and azar a lot of mentions in the quran about how aggressive he got he's saying don't speak another word i'm going to kick you out or i'm going to stone you so violent threats so ibrahim salam says you know he got the hint okay i'll take my leave i'll pray for you and i pray for your guidance essentially now how is this related to arrogance and ignorance you see azar doesn't want to let up his his tradition, you know, people, uh, one of the biggest things why people don't move forward in life or are exploring things is they always fall back on traditions. 
traditions, traditions, traditions. Even if those traditions aren't sound, they still continue doing because that's what their forefathers used to do. And so there's the arrogance, there's that push-pull, you see? Here's Azar, older, he knows more, so on, so like in, in that context of the family. And so he presumes to have authority. There's an arrogance component. And then there's ignorance. You see, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's not just a regular somebody. He's the prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is operating at what a level that Azar just doesn't know. So they, there's no, the, the gap in terms of where the knowledge is and education is, is far. Like, so they're not operating on even that same wavelength. Here, Azar is saying, oh, God's idols should be worshipped. That's what I think it is. And that's the all knowledge portion. But Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he's operating based on monotheism, like only one God, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be worshipped. So there's that gap in, in this. And so even in today's context, like bringing it home in terms of our modern day times, look at technology, prime example of this. Let's say you have a youth, mashallah, who knows how to use Zoom or knows how to use their tablet and they're way advanced in terms of technology, but yet the father or mother is kind of behind, doesn't know quite as much of technology. And so when the youth, the son or daughter is proposing something new as an idea, they don't want to hear it sometimes. They just they don't want to hear it. So you see how it manifests itself in so many different ways. If there's arrogance and there's ignorance, it's a recipe for a disaster. Now, let's move to solutions. What do we do now in this case? One way you can look at this is think of it like a mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. So if you're not open-minded and open-hearted to whatever the specific topic is about, then you see the conflicts will naturally arise and it will become problematic. However, as a starting point, if you're willing to be open and saying, look, I don't know everything. I'm not going to be a know-it-all. Even in spite of my experiences, let me just hold that to the side. Let's see. Maybe I could learn from you just as much as you can learn from me. Having that mindset in the beginning is there. But let's say even still, let's say you have someone who is open-minded and open-hearted, but yet the behavior is really problematic. And so what do you do in this case? Allow me to share with you an analogy as a framework or a way of how you can deal with your family. Imagine that you are a part of a family business. Let's say it's a restaurant. So you're a part of this family restaurant business. Now, simplistically, with a restaurant, it's basically comprising of two things, product and a service. The product, in this case, is the food. And the service is the service, the waiter or waitress bringing the food. Now, is it possible that you could have an amazing product but terrible service? The food is great, but man, the, the waiter or waitress, nasty. There's that. It's possible. And is it also possible that you, if you could have amazing service, but poor quality food? Yeah, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against the cashier, nothing against the waiter or waitress, but the food, uh, it's not quite up to par. The way for this restaurant business to be successful is if you have an excellent product and excellent service. You have excellent food and excellent service. So how does this relate to you and I today in terms of relating it to our family members? Think of Islam as the perfect product. The Quran has been sent down and the Quran is absolutely Perfect. Not one letter needs to be added in. Not letter one letter needs to be taken out. The Prophet Sallallahu is the best example of living the Quran, teaching us. So the product is perfect. You don't. That's already taken care of. But now it's about the service. When you and I accept this deen, when you and I say that we are Muslims, whether we like it or not whether we accept it or not, 
we have become representatives of this deen. We have become customer service agents of this deen. Nothing wrong with the product. Allah has given us the perfect product here. But how do we serve others in the best way? Is it our service that will drive people towards Islam or away from Islam? And so even it starts with our family. The next time you get into an argument, the next time that you have a disagreement, ask yourself, am I going to encourage people to come to a resolution like a customer service? Or am I going to be the example why they would storm out? You know what bad customer service looks like. I'm sure you do. You've had more than your fair share of not so great experiences. And what do you do? You go on Google reviews and you leave that nasty review because of that nasty experience. So you know what bad customer service looks like. I'm asking for you and for me in our dean, are we examples of good customer service for our dean? Are we examples in our own family that when the going gets tough and when things are rough and tough in our own family, things are tense because of arrogance and ignorance, how do we behave as that customer service agent? How do we make sure that we do our absolute level best to make sure that we bring out the best in ourselves and our family? And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify and remedy any sort of relationship problems that are within our family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our families in the best way possible because if we can really solidify our families, that will be the foundation for all the other relationships in our lives. If our family is intact, everything else will be intact. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be the best customer service agents for this deen so that, that we, we don't have arrogance and ignorance in our homes. Barakallahu feekum, jazakum Allah khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.